Welcome guys to another video. Just over a week ago, ImageLine announced a new FL Studio 21.2 beta and again they went all in with the new features. And yes, to my surprise too, these are even bigger than the previous 0.1 update. In this video, I'm going to walk you through all four new features. I will compare them against the AIs that are capable of doing the same thing. So make sure that you're listening on a good pair of headphones or studio monitors if you want to hear the difference and to stick around till the end because there is a lot for us to discuss in the comments and your opinion matters. Let's go! The first new feature that a lot of you will be excited about is the addition of FL Cloud. In the browser, we have now this new cloud icon that if you click on, it brings up FL Cloud sounds. This feature is similar to Splice. You can browse through 200,000 sounds and packs, map them to the key and scale of your project, and also you can sync them to the BPM, which is super handy and convenient because you were browsing for samples from the browser anyways. Now you can browse through a cloud of sounds that will be updated as time goes by by directly from the browser. The sounds can be filtered by genre, by popularity, hidden gems, newest arrivals, or random. You can also search for samples. Let's say you want some drill kicks. Or maybe we want a piano loop. So say the second one is the one that you want to work with. If you click on the three dots beside that sample, then on open slash edit, you get to send it directly either to a new channel, to Edison, to Pitch Corrector, Time Warper, Fruity Slicer or Slice X, or just to a new sampler channel, which is also super handy. If you want to know which pack this sound is from, you can go to view collection. And if you press on the plus icon, this sound will be downloaded and added to your library. Here is what we know about FL Cloud and its availability when the actual update gets released. Based on the ImageLine forum, in short, for those of you who own a legal version of FL Studio, some of these sounds will be available for free and the others will be available under a subscription-based program. There is still no indication as to how much it's going to cost, but soon we'll find out. Let's move on to the second new feature which got the FL fans super excited and that's the addition of Stem Extractor. So now, if you click on the top left of a sample, you have this new option called Extract Stems from Sample. This panel comes up when you click on that. You can choose to extract drums, bass, instruments, and vocals, and then choose what happens to the original sample when the processing is done. I choose Do Nothing. You click on Extract and then wait around one minute to one minute and a half with my computer's processing power at least, and then it will give you those stems. Here's what we're gonna do. I've loaded the same track inside FL Studio's Extractor, Vocal Remover and Lalal.ai and we're also going to put Serato Samples Extractor into test. We're going to be comparing these four against each other and see which one comes on top. Here is where I need your help to vote in the comments. She said for one night, I wanna be a hoe Pull the seat back, we gotta ride real slow I'm like, oh my, how many shots did she throw? Fuck it, I'ma lean back for the show Let's first hear the instrumental by Lalal.ai Now let's listen to Vocal Remover. <music> FL Studio. <music> and Serato Sample. So in my opinion, straight away, Serato Sample is off the race. But to my ears, when it comes to preserving the transients and the punchiness of the drums, the low end and the separation of the instruments, I have to give the edge to Vocal Remover and FL Studio. But here's the thing, they're all going to add some artifacts. None of them is going to be perfect. But the question is, which one adds less artifact and keeps more transients? So that was the instrumental. Now let's listen to the vocal stems. Lalal.ai She said for one night, I want to be a hoe. Pull the seat back, we gotta ride real slow I'm like, oh my, how many shots did she throw? Fuck it, 
I'm a lean back for the show. I can hear some drum bleed in the background. Let's listen to vocal remover. She said for one night, I wanna be a hoe. Put the seat back, we gotta ride real slow. I'm like, oh my, how many shots did she throw? Fuck it, I'm a lean back for the show. Less drum bleed in the background and more transients preserved. Let's hear FL Studios extractor. She said for one night, I wanna be a hoe. Put the seat back, we gotta ride real slow. I'm like, oh my, how many shots did she throw? Fuck it. I'm a lean back for the show. Almost identical to vocal remover. And finally, let's look at Serato sample. She said for one night, I wanna be a hoe. Put the seat back, we gotta ride real slow. I'm like, oh my, how many shots did she throw? Fuck it. I'm a lean back for the show. Once again, to my ears, FL Studio and vocal remover are giving me the best results. But do let me know in the comments which one you think is the best one. If you're finding the video valuable, please consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like and a comment under the video. This this channel is fairly new and really could use your help to grow. Thank you so much for your support. Let's now move on to the third feature, which is the cloud mastering or auto mastering. Under file, export, you now have this new option called master. This should be familiar because it looks very similar to the export tab that you guys seen before. You choose the name and the location of the exported file. Then you choose your export settings. If you want to enable the master effects, insert effects, and if you want to split mixer tracks, you choose your quality, any additional export data that you want added to the file. And finally, at the end, you get to choose your LUFS loudness or choose any of these presets. I'm going to set it to minus nine LUFS for this comparison. And then you get to choose two references based on genre. And because the track I'm going to be putting to test falls under EDM, we're going to choose that. And the second one, we're going to choose techno. If you choose one, you get only one mastered file. If you choose two, you get two mastered files. After that, you just click on start. Again, it takes about a minute, minute and a half, and it gives you the mastered files. For this comparison, I will compare the FL masters against my original master that I released to Spotify and other platforms. We're going to be listening halfway through the build up into the second drop for you to hear the masters in the quieter part and then in the loudest parts. And here's what I want you to pay attention to. Listen to the drums and try to pick up the differences in the punch and the transients. Listen to the overall stereo image and the width especially when the drop comes in. And also try to pay attention to the lead sound at the tail of the reverb, which gives you some indication of the amount of compression we're getting in different masters. Let's go. FL EDM master first. <laughs> Now FL Techno Master. <laughs> And finally, the original master. <laughs> Beat it up. 
In about 10 seconds, I'm going to give you my judgment of this comparison. So if you don't want to be biased by my judgment, pause the video, type in the comments what you think, and then watch me spill the beans. In my opinion, the original master is just as dynamic, but is preserving more transients. Both FL masters are audibly more compressed. That's not to say they're bad. On this particular mix, in this particular comparison and genre, that's the result we got. I can hear and also see the waveforms being more compressed. Apart from that, the original master has a better stereo imaging especially in the drop because i did purposely open it up in the drop a little bit but the fl masters obviously don't go in and pay attention to which parts to drop so i can create some more width for you it's just gonna master it to the lufs level and the genre reference that you set so again here's the question do you prefer to trust an algorithm to put the final touches on your art or do you want to do it yourself or maybe if you can afford it give it to a professional mastering engineer let me know in the comments last but not least we have the addition of a new plugin called kepler here is what it looks like this is an emulation of roland juno 6 synthesizer which you might have used before in the form of arturio's emulation it comes with a bunch of built-in presets it has the iconic chorus one and two replicated in it and when i turn it on you can hear the noise as well it comes with a built-in arpeggio an envelope i've opened arturio's juno 6 emulation on the bottom and you can see fl studios kepler on the top as you could guess they look fairly similar arturio's version has some more advanced features you could mess around with but i've set both of them to default and I've touched none of the knobs or settings so you can hear how they compare against each other. FL Studio, Arturia. I'm gonna play a D minor chord, FL Studio, Arturia. They sound pretty much identical to my ears. As I said at the start of the video, there is a lot for us to discuss in the comments. So make sure that you share your thoughts about the new features. Let me know which of these features is going to be more beneficial to your workflow and your process. And if you still haven't checked out the best new feature in the previous update, which was Piano Roll Scripts, I made a detailed video walking you through my favorite scripts, where you can download them and how to install them. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>